Welcome to another episode of Streetpreneur Podcast, where we go to the streets to find the most creative and innovative entrepreneurs and small business owners. And today I have a special guest, special guest today. He is the king of guacamole. I want you all to take a look at this. It tastes great, tastes delicious. His name is Guacamole by Freddie. And he's here today um, to tell us about guacamole, what he loves about it, and why he created his own signature brand. His wife introduced him to it, you know, to Mexican cuisine and also to guacamole. And he fell in love with it so much that he created his own brand. I would like to welcome Freddie to the show. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Guacamole by Freddie. Um, based in Atlanta, I started doing guacamole, like you said. My wife um, introduced me to it, um, which her family is of Mexican descent, but Spanish. So they actually expanded my pa palate to a lot of different um, foods as far as like cow tongue, obviously guacamole, uh, different things I would never eat. So it was kind of like... Um, oh, oh you're going to have to go back. <laughs> you're going to have to go back. You mentioned cow tongue. Yes. I said the same thing when I tried it. I was like, cow tongue? I was like, no way I'm trying that. But her mom was like, no, you're going to try this, baby. You got to try this. And I was like, all right. Let me oh, try my it. God. But it's actually, yeah. uh, when you do research, right. it's really good protein. Right. Um, it tastes like beef. It tastes like a steak or something. Like hamburger or something. Yeah, it's, it's real, like, she yeah. had it seasoned up real good. You, I would have never known. I'm she never still not eating no, yeah. Look, I'm not going to cook it. I'm, yeah. I don't really eat meat like right. that. <laughs> right, I guess, I guess, I guess. Um, tell us a little bit about your background. Where did you grow up? And you know, how was that experience for you? Uh, my background, I actually grew up in Atlanta, so I'm a native. I know it's hard, that, hard for people to believe that right. in Atlanta, you're from Atlanta. But yeah, I'm from Atlanta. I uh, grew up in East Atlanta, actually, East on the Atlanta. East Side. So, okay, shout out to East Side. Yeah, East yeah. Side. Went to McNair High School. Um, went to college at AIU um, for video production. Okay. And so um, I spent about 21 years in corporate America and finally decided to okay. branch out on myself. Oh, okay. Yeah. What was your position in corporate America? Now, in corporate America, I was, did a little bit of everything. I was, I was with one company, Quick Trip Corporation. On Quick Trip. Um, started in the stores, worked my way up to management, I did HR with Quit Trip. I did regional manager with Quit Trip. They even relocated me to St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and that's where I kind of launched Guacamole by Freddie okay. in 2020. Okay. And quitting your nine to five, how did you know it was time to quit your nine to five? And what, what was your ultimate, ultimate deciding factor in quitting the job and say, hey, I'm going to go and take this entrepreneur leap and uh, see what it has, see what I can create? I'm um, praying about everything. I uh, always keep God first in everything I do. So just praying about everything, um, taking it one day at a time. I knew once I got to the point of I've helped all the employees in this market, I don't feel like I am of value to them anymore. I've done everything. I got everybody where they need to be at. I feel like every day is the same routine. So why not take a chance on myself? Okay, I got you. And which, which skills, you know, did you learn in corporate America that you incorporate into your own company today? Uh, definitely learning how to do a P&L, breaking down your margin, um, what's going to be your bottom line okay. um, as far as like how much money you need, what you're spending out, what you're bringing in, yeah. um, what all goes into a business. And I think those key tools help me in corporate America as far as like dealing with people, different backgrounds, different cultures, um, just the overall aspect of how to run a business. Okay. And who came up with the name? What made you decide to use your name as, a, as the signature brand um, um, for the product? So, um, Freddie is a unique name. So, you when you hear Freddie, you think, is he Italian? Is he... Yeah. You definitely won't you won't forget not, you know, yeah. not too fast. So. Yeah. People yeah. use that name for other other brands, yeah. you know, as far as liquor and everything else. So I've heard of that, too. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so, um, I thought my name was unique. I'm a junior, so my dad's a senior, so... Okay. Yeah. And I so <laughs> I decided to just use my own name, own brand, and go with it. Right. And what is people respond to when they hear your name? Uh, they actually love it because when right. I first came up it's with catchy. it. It's catchy. Yeah. It's very catchy. When I say so. Freddy Guac, they think I'm saying Freddy Walk. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's always catchy, too. And then everyone's like, I like that. The F and G, the logo. I'm like, yeah, just, you yeah. know, that's me. I think it's a brand that's going to be out there for a long time. Yes, it is. It is. Um, as far as manufacturing, um, do you do this in-house or do you use like a commercial kitchen that you go to and you, you know. So right now your... it's a commercial kitchen. If I got yeah. some last minute orders, I can do in-house as well. That's the beauty of that right. whole, being the CEO and I can just say, oh, okay, you need it now, let me get it for you now. But most time if I'm right. doing like a mainstream production of product, I'm going to commercial kitchen. I am taking some courses at Georgia uh, Tech 
um, okay. for manufacturing. And it's like a food business course. Okay. Uh, it's actually mm-hmm. coming up October 12th. So people right. looking into doing that, uh, they can go. Uh, they can go to my page. I can refer them to the teachers uh, the, for that course. But okay. it's really dope. It's free. Okay. And where are you currently selling um, on the guacamole now? Where can where can they purchase? So right now, um, we on, just online doing orders. on my site. Yep, you can okay. do online on my site. I do pop up shops. Um, I work with Black Coffee Fest. That was my biggest project. Yeah, that's so why far. I first. That's why I first yeah. heard about you. <laughs> yeah. I said that's unique guacamole. You'd be the first <laughs> African American I know that's in the guacamole business. Yeah, that's, that's what, what everybody say too. Yeah, that's what made me reach out to you. I yeah. said that's different. You know, I'm always looking for unique entrepreneurs with something special. So yeah, definitely right. working with Black Coffee Fest opened up my um, horizon. I took a chance. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of people back out and they say, "Oh, it's a five hundred dollar fee to get in this." No, you gotta you gotta take a chance on yourself. You gotta invest in yourself. You gotta bet on yourself. Always. Yeah, right. it don't matter what the fee is. If it makes sense, just go out there and do it. It can just be for marketing, a promotion. Like you write it off at the end on your P and L. Say, hey, I I use this to do this, and write off at the end of the year. So, okay, it worked for me though. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely <laughs> working. Uh, what would you say your startup cost? To um, get your entire operation from your from the, from when I first started. Right, any equipment you had to purchase, um, or what was your biggest expense? You know what, the startup cost wasn't that bad with doing it from commercial kitchen from home. I think okay. the minimum probably was ten grand just to get your branding, your bags, containers, and things like that. I use Uline, right. so they got some really mm-hmm. good deals. Mm-hmm. I played around with stuff on Amazon, so I took right. ten grand and just tried to get different things that I think will work for my business what I need. But ten grand, I mean pretty easy the storefront would be a little bit more but that's coming soon right okay um what are ingredients do you use to give it this wonderful taste <laughs> i mean oh. you, i mean you want to share that recipe but oh, no, you can good. tell us so, a little bit about some good. of the ingredients so i use yeah. organic avocados they're okay. a little bit more expensive so that's why right. people like 18 dollars for a container like yes yeah, 18 dollars avocados are not cheap because right. it's so, quality the, yeah. the top quality so i right. use um organic avocados uh cilantro Cherry tomatoes, so that way you can get the whole tomato, whole tomato versus those little choppy tomatoes. Right. It looks better with the Roman cherry, yeah. cherry tomatoes. Yeah. And then you got little lime juice, um, little lime juice, and then the seasonings that brings out that extra rich flavor. Right. That sets it different from other guac. And do you use local suppliers, or do you? What yep. are your? Um, um, the cow farmers market. I go to that. Go to mm-hmm. them to get like cases because sometimes I got pop up shops. You really never know what you're gonna sell, but. Like right. I said, Black Coffee Fest, every day I sold out. I brought 40 to 50 to 60 containers, and every day, I mean, yeah, they're, they're it'll be gone out. before right. I get right. to the right. end of the event. Right. So your suppliers, do you purchase monthly, or do you just purchase by the week, or just depends on the order? On demand. On demand. So uh, on my right. webpage, um, pretty much like, for example, football season, I'm doing promotion now um, mm-hmm. for the $50 party bowls. It's a 64-ounce party bowl of guac, and it comes with free chips. That's the promotion I'm doing for football season. Okay. So t- okay. uh, this week I have seven of those party bowls that okay. are due. Oh, yeah, that's great, man. That's great. <laughs> uh, let's touch on marketing. Okay. You know, just marketing and advertise. What has been working for you? What a, which medium have you found to be successful besides social media, or did you just strictly use social media? Um, for the most part, I strictly use social media because it's free for yeah. you to use. I mean, yeah, I do is. invest in my social mm-hmm. media. So Instagram definitely helps out a lot. TikTok is explosive. Um, TikTok get me people from all over the world, like quicker than Instagram. Yeah. It used to be Instagram that way, but now, but it's, now TikTok. it's TikTok. Yeah. Right. So I get a lot of right. feedback or sometimes going to interact with different mm-hmm. people on there and they're like, Oh, right. guacamole. I love guacamole. And they reshare it with somebody else. Right. But that's really been helping out. And then on Instagram, I use the business page side to um, network. So I would pay like, I don't know, what is it, $30 a month for ads. So okay. they just run Guacamole okay. by Freddy ads on right. different pages. Right. And they tell me, oh, I get, you got 65% more women that are looking at your page. Versus men. Versus men. Right. So so the Instagram ads work more it, efficiently? Yes, it helps out a lot. Okay. And it okay. gave me a report of data that I need that I just integrate into my business side. So, okay, now I know what to cater to. Let me see how to get the men involved, too. So oh, okay. we okay. all on the same page. And um, what has been some of your hardest challenges you've had to face? Or um, you can say, like, um, this is an early mistake that I made or I spent money in this particular area that I should have. It was um, uh, kind of unnecessary. Or just what's been the hardest part of, of getting the business going? Um, the hardest part is knowing that, well, like I tell people all the time, it's, this is not no easy work. It's fun to be an entrepreneur, but it's hard work. You got to be dedicated and you got to be, like, involved in your business to make it grow the hardest part for me i guess i do everything myself my marketing i make the product 
I order my supplies. I do my P and L. Yeah. Right now, just me. So mm -hmm. this actually helps me, so I can build my brand. So when I do hire in the staff, I already know the business. So I, I know how it's going to make the go. transition a, a, a lot easier. Yeah. So it's just like hiring mm -hmm. positions. Hey, you're gonna be my marketing person. You're gonna be the person over the kitchen, whatever the case may be. But it's all me. So I have to get up, like, be ready to go. And a lot of my friends are like, dang, you was at this place, this place. Like, yeah, I had. This event, that event. Sometimes I have three events in one day. Right. So how how do you keep track or know which events? How do you find the events um, that you uh, want to go to, or you just um, you go online and look and see um, what's so, on Eventbrite this week, yeah. or how do you? So I do use Eventbrite. Right. Um, okay. Instagram again, help me out. People tag me and say, "Hey, you all this place, uh, right. Black oh, Coffee okay. Fest." So somebody tagged me and said, um, "Black Coffee Fest look for vendors," and mm -hmm. um, I went to the shop. And I just went to do my interview, kind of like, you know, how I'm here today. Did an interview. People came up to the table. Black Coffee Fest allowed me to sell on the spot right there. <laughs> so right, right. Uh, it was a line of people. I brought a lot of product just for my interview, but ended up selling product. Because people were like, no, nah, I want to buy that. They want sample sand to buy it. But, um, but yeah, that's pretty much how I do it. Okay. And what would you say, let's kind of break down the money aspect a little bit. Um, what have you? What's been your highest gross in month, or how much your highest gross that you made monthly so far? This year, um, like I said, this will be my third year in business. So this year, I really like took the bull by his horns and just started going at it. So I would say summertime is when I start crushing numbers like bad, like May, June, July. Uh, that whole time frame, I start crushing numbers. Um, in a three month span, I hit twelve grand for the first time with the business. Like just oh, that's good, man. <laughs> just yeah, off the yeah. back. Right. So for this, ninety days for ninety days. Yeah, that's right. yeah, and um, I'm on pace this year. Probably hit about forty five because it's people yeah. like guacamole. A lot of people here in Atlanta from California, they love guacamole. That's California's like a guacamole state, so they just right. love it. So, okay. um, and people tell a friend and tell a friend, and I just keep yeah. going. So. Uh, let's kind of break down the retail end of it. Mm -hmm. Have you approached any supermarkets about carrying the brand in stores, or did you contact them to find out their requirements, mm -hmm. or do you go to local restaurants and approach the owners about carrying the product? So what is your overall strategy as far as um, retail? So right now, retail, I do have some restaurant owners that we've had to sit down in the last couple of weeks to put product in the stores. And what I do is I try to promote it as like, here, I'm going to give you free product for a month, see how it goes. Then from there, we'll talk about the numbers. Um, as far as like getting it manufactured, that's why I'm taking the class at Georgia to, Tech to, learn, to more. learn more and get it into the actual stores like Whole Foods. It'd be most of the high-end stores, so I'm looking for the gourmet stores or organic stores. Specialty shops. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, community involvement. How has the community supported you so far? Oh, really good. I actually live out in Stonecrest, Georgia. So, yeah, for me. Yeah, so on that side of town, we got um, a lot of um, black businesses. We have, um, um, I can't think of it off the top of my head. It, just in this whole Stonecrest area, we have a community event in my community to, to where every month on a Thursday, the last Thursday of the month, we do a pop-up pop shop. A pop -up so. shop. Right. And we get to network with different vendors. I, right. I mean, I got probably like a list of vendors. I call and say, hey, you want to come to the shop and set up? They come mm -hmm. set up, and then the whole neighborhood just comes support. Support, yeah. Yeah, I mean. it's food trucks out there, everything in the neighborhood. They love it. They rather wait till the pop-up event to order to go out. Well, get to go out there versus right. using the app. Then I, get to, then I run out, they're like, oh, yeah, you do have the app. Right, and but, then yeah. they think about it. Right, yeah. I got you, I got you. And let's talk about scaling the business. Um, what are some of your plans? Um, you want to do the sit-down restaurant, or you want to start your own food truck, or mm -hmm. just kind of which ideas do you currently have in mind as far as scaling the business? Okay. So, yeah, um, I don't know if you guys probably seen my Instagrams. I've been going to different cities, looking at different guacamole places. I just came back from Mexico mm -hmm. um, Tuesday. I went to go look at some different um, – how they do their business, their set up, their, their, their model. Yeah. Right. And I want a storefront that's going to be like, uh, kind of like a bar setup. You get the, your different um, types of guap, your pineapple guap, mango guap, regular guap. Right. You can put on the salad. I have a bar set up yeah. on the side. You have the TVs for sport games and stuff. Right. I want that walk in traffic, but feel like a, a college -y young atmosphere. Yeah. 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 So in my business plan, I kind of stated 18 to. Uh, 50s, like a that, that, that kind of restaurant vibe. Yeah. yeah. And how many flavors do you currently have of your guac? Uh, right now you have four. Like I said, you had a pineapple, you had a mango, you have the regular guac, and then um, you have your extra spice guac. Women love the extra spice. I mean, I can put like 30 pepper and they say, I want more. I'm like, more? <laughs> so the extra spice that you would say is your top seller? 
That's pineapple is actually pineapple, yeah. pineapple is the top. That one's the right go-to now. right now. A mango is going to launch more out next summer. So okay, I tested out this year, um, but pineapple is the one they did just bananas. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, and uh, any other product line that you have? Oh, uh, we didn't talk about the double eggs. Yeah, yeah. Can I you have hold a, it up for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. I have the guacamole double eggs. Um, it's no yolk in the eggs. It's just uh, guacamole inside the egg shell. Then for my vegans, I do the mushroom shell with guacamole inside. Okay. So I learned that too, like doing pop up shops. Yeah. I got vegans, vegans like, oh, I don't do you. eggs. I don't do, I need right. this. No, so. no, yeah, no dairy. And hold up the, um, just the guac container itself. Yep, guac container, 16 ounce. It also comes in a, a 12 ounce and a 8 ounce. Okay, and what's the prices? So for what this particular one, this one is $18. If you get the pineapple guac in this size, it's $22. If you get the uh, 8 ounce, it's $12. And then the eggs, as well as $12. Okay. Yep. And how can they contact you? Um, you guys can follow me on uh, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at Guacamole by Freddy, uh, where you'll find my link to go to the actual site to order guacamole. All right. Yep. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to thank you for taking your time out of your busy schedule Absolutely. to come to Streetpreneurs. Is there any advice you want to leave for aspiring entrepreneurs? Just know... Um, Take the chance on yourself. You you don't want to live and grow up to say, oh, I wish I would have did this, wish I would have tried this. I left a six-figure corporate job to take a chance on myself to do my own thing. I moved back to Atlanta in 2021, bought another house, and just went crazy on Freddie Glock. And the reviews are going crazy. Even, like, now while I'm sitting here, my watchman going off saying orders coming in, which, <laughs> I mean, that's the life of an entrepreneur. You're going to keep going. So I love it. So just keep God first and do your thing. You got this. Trust me. Okay. And I hope you all enjoyed this episode and um, definitely learned a lot um, from uh, Guacamole by Freddie as far as um, being an inspiration to help those who are aspiring to start their business. So, and we wish you much success. And I appreciate it. Yeah, I could continue with the guac. <laughs> I'm sure it's going gonna, it's gonna to go major. And for all the ones that say they don't eat guac, trust me, right. once you try it, you would know. Yeah, it, it, do, it does. <laughs> I don't even eat it, but I'm definitely going to order order his guac. So if I don't order no other guac, I'm definitely going to order his guac. And I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, definitely order Freddie's guac. And uh, like I said, I want to thank, uh, thank you for coming out again. Absolutely. And welcome. This is another episode of Streetpreneur Podcast. I hope this was very informative. I want everybody to hit that subscribe button. Please leave a comment in the comment section about what you think about this interview today. And any other entrepreneurs that you have in mind, please do not hesitate to send us a DM or email us. And uh, again, all my streetpreneurs out there, we'll be back with another episode from other small business owners and also innovators. Thank you.